हरे कृष्णा इन द सीरीज ऑफ ट्वेल्व महाजन दे आर लाइफ एंड पास टाइम्स वी आर स्टार्टिंग ए न्यू डिस्कशन ऑफ महाजन राजा जनक महाराज जनक इज टोल्ड वॉज एन आइडियल किंग एंड फादर एज फर श्रीमद भागवतम एंड ही स्पेंट हिज लाइफ एज एन एग्जाम्पल फॉर आस हाउ टू डू साधना भक्ति अलॉन्ग विथ अवर गारहस्त्र लाइफ महाराज जनक वॉज ए एग्जेम्पलरी डिवोटी एंड ही वॉज वेरी फेमस वेर लॉर्ड रामचंद्र बिकम हीज सन इन लॉ एंड माँ लक्ष्मी बिकेम हीज डॉटर एज माँ सीता लेट एस डीप डाइव इन टू द सेशन इन दिस सीरीज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द महाजन हु एंड ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द वे दे हैव लीड देयर लाइफ एंड हाउ वी कैन फॉलो देम so that we can also get the greatest success of our life which is krishna prem we if you have missed any of the episode in past you can either click on the playlist of the video or you can follow a link which i have given at the end of the video at the description of the video which is a blog site where remaining videos are pasted are already posted i request you to be associated with this video series as i am going to give lot of information which are generally not available in our day to day life maharaj janak being the important character in ramayan there will be a tendency for us to know more about talk more about sri ramchandra and ma sita and their past time with maharaj janak but in this series i am trying to focus on his life and past time and also how as a devotee he has he has spent his life so let us start our session today hare krishna the two qualities which immediately come into my mind while talking about maharaj janak and as told in shrimad bhagavatam and other scriptures sir one is maharaj janak he performed his prescribe duties in a perfect way and the scripture also tells us that if we perform our prescribe duty as per the way our scriptures are telling us then we also attain the highest result and maharaj janak was also famous for the non attachment despite of being a king despite of being not only king a chakravarti sam samrat he was a rajarshi Rajarshi is a person who is a king as well as a rishi and he had absolute non attachment to all the material thing he used to possess so we will deal more on this qualities later with example but these are most important thing which comes in our mind as of now Maharaj Janak was the king of the Bidha kingdom Bidha kingdom was an ancient kingdom in India and that was a major political and cultural center during the later vedic period that is roughly 1100 to 500 bce the kingdom covered parts of what is now known as northern and eastern bihar as well as a, a large part of eastern nepal the kingdom's borders were the sadanira river to the west and the kaushiki river to the east the ganga river was in the south and the himalaya mountains were in the north the kings of the bidha kingdom named as janakas as he was known for treating his subjects like children king janaka was born in a great ikshaku family and in the ikshaku family one of the major king in his family was maharaj nimi we hear lot of story of maharaj nimi when we read shrimad bhagavatam and maharaj janak's father was rishabh harman and he was also married to a queen called sunayana maharaj janak's original name was shiradhaj what you what we come to know that the 
in the dynasty of Ikshaku and the descendants of Nimi, there were many kings whose name was Janakas. And Janakas generally meant who is to treat their subjects as their children. But the current Janak, who is father of Urmila and Shita, his name was Shiradhaj. And his brother's name was Kushadhaj. Upon ascending the throne as a king of Mithila, he faced some attack from the king of Shankashya and his name was Sudhavan. However, there was a major fight and in that fight Maharaj Janak defeated that king and he emerged victorious. And after killing Sudhanvan, he appointed his brother Kushadhas as the new king of Shankasha. Why this Sankasha story is important? Because this is the place where in much later days Gautam Buddha appeared and it is sometimes in 3rd or 2nd century he was present in this particular place. So we find a mention of Gautam Buddha also in our Srimad Bhagavatam and it was written much earlier but the prediction and the mention of Gautam Buddha is there with reference to Samkarsha. Now we will discuss why the Bideha kings are named as Bideha king and Janakas. For that we need to go to the history and understand the origin of Nimi Maharaj's sacrifice. Now the second son of Maharaj Ikshwasu of Surya Bangsa was Nimi. Once Nimi Maharaj wanted to conduct a long sacrifice for the benefit of the people and approach Brahmarshi Vasishta to do the sacrifice. Brahmarshi Vasishta was occupied conducting a many year long sacrifice for Devraj Indra and therefore he asked Maharaj Nimi to wait. Keeping the benefit of his subjects in mind, Maharaj Nimi did not wait and he approached Gautama Rishi instead. Gautama Rishi agreed and Nimi's sacrifice started under the guidance of Gautama Rishi. When Brahmarshi Vasishta returned after completing Indra's sacrifice and found out that Nimi did not wait and started the sacrifice without him, he got very angry and he cursed Nimi to lose his body. Drishis did not stop the sacrifice even after he lost his body. And when after the sacrifice, when the gods appeared at the end of the sacrifice, they offered Nimi his body back. Nimi Maharaj however refused because by then he has understood that the absolute truth is Bhagavan Sri Krishna and therefore he did not bother about losing body. And he chose to reside, reside in the eyelids of his people. That is why when we the time take to our blinking is called Nimisha. Since Limi lost his body, he came to known as Bideha and the dynasty started by him was also called by the same name. The first Janaka was Mithi, the founder of the city Mithila. With Nimi no longer residing in the physical body, Rishis churned his lifeless body and through this churning was born Mithi, born through churning, who was also called Bideha for being born from a lifeless body that is called son of Bideha. Because of his miraculous birth, he assumed the title of Janaka and all his descendant kings was called Bideha. The city where Mithi built the capital of Bideha kingdom came to be known as Mithila after him. Janak Maharaj was married to Queen Sunayana. As we see in Ramayana that Janak Maharaj and Sunayana found Shita while ploughing as a part of the Yagga and they adopted her. Now Shita was none other than 
she was actually goddess lakshmi who came to serve lord rama in tritaju shunayana later gave birth to another child her name was urmila on the day of jaya ekadashi and urmila was an avatar of goddess naga lakshmi in ramayana we see urmila got married to lakshmana and sita ji got married to sri ramchandra there is a fascinating story of janak raja and his guru rishi ashtavakra i will try to narrate in very short but it is a very long episode in scriptures janak raja one day when he was in peak of his power he was sleeping and he saw a very strange dream he found that suddenly all his kingdom has gone he has been defeated and he was roaming around here and there without anyone with his side he was extremely thirsty on the very hot hot sun and he was feeling very uncomfortable and by some means he could arrange by begging or something he could arrange one glass of water and when he was trying to drink that water somebody came and he kicked out that glass and he could not drink that water also he was devastated and he was thinking that how this has happened and suddenly his dream broke and he woke up and he woke up and he found that he is the king of mithila maharaj chakravarti janak so now he is completely surprised he said what is true that is true or this is true because it is appearing it was so real so truth but it is now also it is truth so i am not sure which one is truth next day he called the court and his court was full of all knowledgeable saints and saint godly like person and he asked them that unless and until i am getting answer to this dream it is very difficult for me to get relief so oh learned people please discuss among yourself and let me know what is the truth whether the dream the janak raja in the dream is truth or the janak raja after the dream in this life is truth now many of the sages and many of the learned pandits they wanted to give him lot of philosophy lot of scripture they wanted to talk they at all about maya they wanted to talk about talk about the illusion and they wanted to talk about his karma but janak raja was not convinced and he had a very simple logic or very simple principle unless and until his question is answered no learned people can leave house in that learned people's court court there was one rishi whose name was karmat rishi and karmat rishi was also very learned people now there is a small story of that when rishi's wife was expected at that time rishi was reciting the vedas now in the womb ashtavakra muni was there and at that time his name was not ashtavakra that child was there and the child is the he is the reservoir of knowledge he came with special benediction from brahma ji in the next birth he took this form now the child when he heard that his father was reciting vedas he he listened very carefully and he found there are some wrong syllables his father is uttering so he rebuked his father and he said please recite properly you cannot recite wrongly the vedic mantras so his father was very surprised and he said who was the person who is talking so his mother said that the son who is inside the womb he is telling so his father became very angry and he said okay you have such a such a courage that you are finding fault in me even before taking birth you take birth as ashtavakra ashtavakra in english which means who is paint from eight sides now when he took birth it was definitely a very difficult position but he being a big vaishnav and great devotee of supreme personality of godhead he never minded his physical form he started studying all the scriptures and he finally become 
द ग्रेट लॉन एट स्कॉलर अष्टवक्र मुनि एज द स्टोरी गोज फॉर मेनी मेनी मंथ्स दे आर हिज फादर वॉज एवे एंड वेन ई इंक्वायर टू हिज मदर हिज मदर सेड ही हेज गॉन टू जनक राजाज कोर्ट एंड सम क्वेश्चन वॉज आंसर्ड ही कूड नॉट आंसर एंड दे आर फोर ही इज केप वेरी नाइसली दे आर फर ही इज नॉट अलाउड टू लीव दैट प्रिमाइसेस तो अष्टावक्र मुनि सेड नो प्रॉब्लम मदर यू अलाउ मी आई विल गो एन आंसर द आंसर द क्वेश्चन his his mother said i can't do that i have already lost my husband i can't afford to lose my son then he somehow pleaded with mother and convinced her that he will be able to answer the question and he and he came to janak raja's courtyard when he came to his courtyard looking at his form everybody started laughing and when everybody was laughing he was very looking at them very strangely then one of the minister of janak raja asked his purpose of coming and he said what are they said the purpose your courtier is full of people who are fool and rascal he said what are you saying all people are very knowledgeable then even janak raja also said how come you are telling my pandits are fool and rascal they are the most learned people on the earth he said if they are the most most learned people why they are laughing at looking at my form this form is made of material body which emanates from the five elements of earth and that will go down at any point of time what is there to laugh at this that means that shows they are not gany at all they are doing some kind of wrong perception in your mind then janak raja said if you are so confident that you are gany please answer my question so he asked please explain me what is your question so janak raja told him that the question is this is the dream and which one is true the dream janak raja in the dream or janak raja outside dream ashtavakra muni said you are a, you are also a foolish person like your people only actually neither the dream is true nor the reality is true because in dream the truth is something which never changes you see when you are dream something you you were but the moment you woke up that reality changed and when you are awake as soon as you will fall asleep this reality will change so therefore hey o oh lord o oh king nothing is nothing is permanent therefore these are not truth so telling that or hearing that from ashtavakra muni janak raja said then what is truth he said the truth is only lord vishnu you are yourself so much gany such a learned uh, learned person you are the disciple of you are the disciple and the devotee of lord how come you are asking such question then janak raja left his throne and fell on his feet and he wanted him to be his guru he said if you want to me to be my guru then i can't stay here come to the forest where i stay janak raja released all the all the scholars and followed him when he entered the forest the forest was so dense and he came with his soldiers they finally got lost the way and finally when he was alone he suddenly saw that ashtavakra muni is sitting one place and he is doing chanting looking at that ashtavakra muni janak raja wanted to come down from the horse Rasta Vakramuni told him, "Stay in that position." Janak Raja wanted to hear and obey all the instructions of his guru. Therefore, he stayed on that one saddle of the horse and stayed there for many, many months, many, many years. And with that mercy of guru, and by doing that austerity, Janak Raja became atma gani, and he understood. And later, he learned the philosophy from Rasta Vakramuni. The story of Ashtavakra Muni and Janak Raja is very interesting one, and it is worth men- mentioning in our episode as well. Now let us talk about Horodhanu episode. As explained in one of the previous episodes of the Twelve Mahajan series, we di- we discussed how there was a great fight organized between Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu, and the fight. 
happened with each of them carrying a great bow which was called dhanush now the vishnu dhanush after the fight was with parashuram and the shiva the dhanush he was carrying that was called hara dhanush and for dynasty after dynasty it was lying with the videhi king nimi and his dynasty now this haradhanu was so heavy and it was so huge just to move the haradhanu they used to require some 500 people and i am talking of 500 people of satta yug or treta yug not kali yug good built large size 500 people on a chariot is to pull the dhanush and they used to worship the dhanush one day when this dhanush was kept in a room devi sita while cleaning the table just lifted the dhanush by her left hand and in another episode when there was some fruits were supposed to be picked up from tree devi sita used the dhanush to pick up the fruit from the tree these two episodes were narrated to maharaj janak and maharaj janak was very surprised that the dhanush which could not be moved by more than 500 people how that can be moved by devi sita and therefore devi sita as a child could do that so maharaj janak took a vow that until and unless he finds a person who can put a arrow on that bow he will not give hand of daughter of hand of his daughter devi sita and that is how this harodhanu episode was so important and i am not going into detail as it is known to all of us that sri ramchandra under guidance of vishamitra muni broke the dharodhanu and devi sita and sri ramchandra got married now this harodhanu episode throws another important angle in our mind in bhagavad gita lord that he is bhakta vatsala bhagavan is always very kind to his devotees without his mercy even a leaf cannot move and when bhagavan has a mercy even a child can also move the haradhanu therefore it is important for us to seek for bhagavan's mercy his blessing at all time this haradhanu episode and marriage to devi devi sita and lord ram also on the same day urmila was married to lakshman who was none other than balaram himself so we will move to other stories of uh, this janak raja's life obviously janak raja was very happy seeing that devi sita and lord ramchandra got married king janaka was a swan like vaishnava and he ruled his kingdom very righteously a pure vaishnava never runs after material happiness like an ordinary condition soul king janaka set an ideal example of how one should surrender to the lotus feet of shri krishna and perform the devotional activity he also is an example how somebody can rule the kingdom and yet become a detached person once rishi vasudev sent his detached son sukhdev to janak raja to learn this technique of being detached and also becoming king now when sukhdev goshami came to janak raja he purposely did not meet him he kept him waiting for a long time and he was tempting him with many other alternative which failed to tempt sukhdev goshami because who is also a very one of the mahabhagavat and he is also very detached so finally janak raja came and met him and he took him to the river for taking bath while taking bath suddenly sukhdev goshami while he was conversing with janak raja about absolute truth he saw that the entire palace is being burnt 
So he actually was very disturbed and he told Janak Raja that his palace is getting burned. But he saw Janak Raja did not show a simple point of disturbance or any kind of moros, moron on that fact. Since he did not have anything, he understood Shukdev Goswami that how a yogi, a detached person can be king and also become, also become devoted to the Supreme Personality of Lordhead. However, afterwards hearing the truth about the Absolute Truth and after doing lot of Bhagavad discussion, Shukdev Goswami and Janak Raja, Shukdev Goswami returned to his home. This part of story of Janak Raja and the Yamalaya was taken from Padma Puran Patal Khanda. Lord Ananta Shesha once narrated a wonderful account of how Janak Raj visited the abode of Yamraj. After a long life, Janak Maharaj gave up his body through the process of yoga. A divine airplane Decorated with many bells, descended and Janak Maharaj boarded it. On the way, the airplane came near the abode of Yamraj, the Lord of Death. There, sinners were suffering punishment in millions of hells, and when the wind had touched the body of Janak Raj, came to them, they felt great joy and their misery disappeared. Then those persons oppressed by sins, wanting to keep Janaka's association, began to lament. They spoke piteously to Janak Maharaj, O oh, Blessed One, please do not leave. Who we, who are greatly tormented, are feeling happy due to contact with the bridges that have touched your body. Hearing those words, the very righteous king became filled with pity and thought to himself, if Due to touch of the bridges that have touched my body, I am bringing some happiness to the residents of Yamalaya, then I will stay in this place. This is heaven for me. Thinking like this, the king stayed there by the gateway to hell. After some time, Yamraj himself, who inflict severe torment upon sinners, came to that gateway. There he saw Maharaj Janak, full of mercy and a doer of great meritorious deeds standing by the doorway. Then Jomra smiled and said to Janak, O King, you are Sarvodharma Siramani, the crest jewel of pity. Why have you come here? This is a place for wicked sinners who have caused harm to others. Men like you who perform meritorious deeds do not come to this place. Only who deceive others and engage in criticizing others and who are intent on stealing others' wealth come here and receive intense punishment. Jamras then said, Those persons who do not remember Lord Ramchandra with their mind, words or deeds, I throw them into hell and boil them. Those who have remembered the Lord of the Goddess of Good Fortune leave the suffering of hell and quickly go to Vaikuntha. And therefore, he sent back Janak Raja to Vaikuntha and he told that Yamalaya, Yamalaya is not the right place for him. However, while going, Janak Raja met those sinners and pacified them for some time. This story is very interesting for us because a pure devotee does not even mind go to hell for the sake of bringing happiness to somebody's life. Hare Krishna! We are going to close this episode of Janak Raja here. There are many stories in many scriptures, but because the, the, the paucity of time, we are stopping here. And in the next episode, we will talk of another example.